Welcome to week four of the Grocery Guru with our Grocery Guru, Andrew Grant. Hello. Hi, Darren. How are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. We're not even going to talk about L-O-C-K up or down. Not mentioning it. Not allowed. Okay. Day one, day one 26 to go. He mentioned it. Okay, moving swiftly on. So we've talked about urban fulfillment centres. We've talked about cash free management is dead. What are we talking about this week? Oh, you missed week three. Oh, God, I did. Where we were talking about what we can't talk about and well, how was... yes. yes, and how difficult Christmas is going to be. And if you think about it, we spoke about that last Thursday. And it was on Saturday morning we all found out that actually our worst fears, even worse fears, were coming true. I know. But you see what I did there? I didn't even talk about it. I just went straight over it. What are we talking about <laughs> this week? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see how, how up with the latest grocery news you are. I want to talk about the um, the latest grocery kid on the block, uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Mark White. Any ideas? Yeah. I think you're talking about the GCA or the Groceries Code Adjudicator, also known as the Grocery Czar. Am I right? Oh, very good. Yes, you obviously right. read your, your industry news or you've got the, the right alert set up on your phone. Yes, um, Mark White took over as the UK's second groceries code adjudicator on Monday. Okay, so the um, brief one was Christine Taken, is that right? Christine, who we, uh, we, we all know very well, and she had spent, what, five years, actually, five years in role. Um, mm essentially defining what the code was because when she started it was just this big blob of legislation that was completely new to the UK um, nobody quite knew what it was what it would do um, and she put breathed life into it and breathed form and focus into it I guess all right, so just for everyone who thinks, what the hell are these guys talking about? And if you're in the world of UK grocery, you really need to know this stuff. So I'm just going to test my knowledge a bit and check with Andrew, who is the guru. So I think the order was passed in Parliament in 2009, and the order was 16 pages of law that contained GSCOP. Did I get some it's, of that? Yeah, part of the Enterprise Act, which went legal in 2010, although it went through Parliament in 2009, so you're yeah. right, correct. Cool, cool. So uh, it's roughly 16 pages. G Scott was uh, five pages of this order. G Scott's a bit we all talk about. And G Scott is a piece of law that encourages suppliers to, uh, sorry, encourages supermarkets to look after their suppliers more fairly. Uh, I wouldn't say encourage because it's a law, it's mandated. Um, but yeah, it's, it's essential. The reason it was essentially brought into existence was the this perception, whether it's perception or reality, that supermarkets would use their buying power to exploit suppliers um, needlessly. Okay. Um, what, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, you know, you only have to read the press over the years about, you know, bully boy tactics, etc. Um, you know, you and I have been in the industry probably in typical sort of tabloid fashion, typical tabloid fashion, slightly exaggerated. Yeah, slightly. All right, so the other part I wanted to ex uh, dispel is the myth. Now, when you and I do training, you do train with a lot of people on G-Scott competition law, one of the big myths is that suppliers are bound by this. They're not. Yeah, that's, that's the number one. The number um, one myth is suppliers think they're covered by the code and get all scared that they could be in some sort of legal dispute as a result of breaking the code um, yeah. and the good news is no only 13 currently 13 named grocery retailers so those 13 the you know you can um, run off your fingers the the, the usual suspects your tesco aldi's sainsbury's asda's iceland's waitrose's are all covered by the code and only those 13 can break G Scott break the law if you like when it comes to G Scott. All right, suppliers, and, suppliers can't. And if they break the law, the potential fine is big, isn't it? It's not as bad as competition law. You know, being caught um, trying to um, fix prices or manipulate retail pricing, which is ten percent of your of your global turnover, um, you breach <coughs> breach G Scott. It's one percent of your UK turnover. Right. 
Ah, so okay. still, a, still a pretty big hit for the likes of a Tesco or a Sainsbury's or an Asda. Okay. All right, let's come back to your original point then. So we've got a new czar in play uh, in yeah. the chair. Um, what's his background? Yeah, interestingly, so um, Christine Takeon, the previous uh, adjudicator, had a retailer and farming background. So yeah. she was the co-op's farming manager and basically was that link between the co-op's farms and the co-op. So she was pretty well ingrained in all the supply chain practices that um, a food supplier would be, um, you know, would go through to, to serve one of the, the big grocers. Um, Mark's background is very much legal background. So he was, I think his, one of his last role was legal counsel to Compass Group, the, um, the catering, the big catering group. So um, inevitably, you know, new set of boots on the, on the carpet, um, there will be some form of change, I imagine. And okay. it will be interesting to see. Now, we had a quick catch up before we started this. And you said to me something about um, all house training. What was the term you used there? And I thought I, I caught on to that. Yeah, just really, really interesting. The, um, the press release that the, um, the government put out on Monday uh, confirming his appointment. Um, you know, pretty standard stuff. You know, uh, we welcome Mark to the grocery code. We pay tribute to the fantastic job Christine did. Um, but then Mark said, um, amongst the usual stuff, delighted to be joining this and a great time to join and lots of challenges, is I look forward to driving a whole house approach to retailer compliance, including training. Okay. So what that, that's an interesting choice of words for me because in terms of compliance for retailers, it's their commercial teams that are the people who have to comply formally legally have to comply and be trained every year in the code so that's a, a legal requirement of the code is all commercial um, executives in those 13 named retailers have to be trained in gscot when they're appointed and every year and repeated um, mark seems to be signaling that he wants to take a whole of house approach so i assume that means supply chain logistics marketing not checkout staff because otherwise you know there's 200,000 odd people <laughs> in the likes of a Tesco um yeah quite been, an opportunity for, quite an opportunity for training actually given what we do Darren hey you're gonna get a thumbs up from me so if I put that back to my language if I'm a Tesco buyer I get trained in GSCOP every every year and I have to be by law yep. Mark's potential approach is that my colleague in supply chain might also now need to be trained every year might and that may even go slightly wider from buying to supply chain to other functions within yeah. supermarkets I, I guess and it, it's this it's this extension of what Christine take on call her collaborative approach yeah. I don't think Mark will be able to change the law to say everybody that works for a Tesco or an Azra Sainsbury's must be trained in the code. I, I don't think that will happen, but I think I could see an argument where he says, look, um, okay, at the moment you have to train your commercial teams, but actually somebody in supply chain or marketing could inadvertently break the code because of, um, you know, honest ignorance. So actually retailers, it'd be in your interest in a collaborative way if you trained much more, particularly of your, your, your support center or head office functions, so that they don't accidentally break the code. Okay, and that, all right, that's a good point. And let me just extend that because I'm just aware of our time. If I'm a supplier, now obviously I can't break the code, we've said that, that doesn't change. What do I need to do to get ahead of this? Well, I think, and, and Mark said in his uh, in, in one of his joining statements, you know, there's still circa 50% of suppliers, of, of suppliers to the UK supermarkets who've had no training in the code, um, which in theory means they don't understand what protections they have under the code. And, you know, if you, if, if you do understand the code, if you are trained in the code as a supplier, the code does give you some relatively important protections from some of the the more extreme buying practices that you know some retailers historically have, have, have got up to. And also by understanding the code, a supplier can help um, encourage a supermarket if they might be going outside the code to come back within. 
Yeah, I guess, yeah, fl yeah fl flag up as a, a sort of a yellow card rather than going straight to a red card, I guess, yeah, if you want to use that analogy. Yeah, okay. All right, that makes sense. So G-Scop, wider suppliers. Okay, and the other bit that I was thinking of, just last bit, was the other fact is the written supplier agreement. Now, I can't remember the fact, but how many suppliers still don't have one? Oh, thank you for that. I can't remember. <laughs> um, right. I think it's roughly a third, but I thought I was going to say a third. I've got, I've got, I've got fifty percent for not having trained, and then about a third have not got the most important protection that the code gives you, which is this, um, uh, this requirement that if you ask as a supplier, that you have a code compliant written supply agreement. With your retail and the bit that really surprises me is this thing is now a decade old and we've still got let's call it a third of suppliers it might be 40 percent who still don't have one of these protective written supply agreements that can really help them absolutely um and yeah why why not why not do a, a last 15 seconds of advertising it is what we do um so if you're watching this and you wonder what we've talked about for the last 10 minutes um pick up the phone or drop us an email Cool. All right. Well, we do have the GSCOP helpline as well. So, Andrew, thank you very much. Um, do you have a cliffhanger for next week or are you going to keep it close to your chest? I think we've got used to a cliffhanger being a cliffhanger. Oh, it's left us yeah. cold. Love it. Love there it. Go. Because obviously this is, a, this is about what is the latest news in grocery. If the news hasn't happened, unfortunately, oh. I, haven't got, I haven't got the proverbial crystal ball. All right. OK, last bit. Fingers crossed for Biden versus Trump. Was that too political? That's too political. I'm... <laughs> we'll see you next week, the Grocery Guru, for episode five. Andrew, you take care. Cheers, Darren. Bye-bye.